what's up everybody it's been a while we are uh, if you can see behind me we're even in a in a new location now we moved into a new place and finally got the garage set up a little bit so uh, time to start putting out some more videos for you guys hopefully these help you out so what we've got going on today um, uh, you know something that I'm sure a lot of us uh, kind of don't look forward to doing and that's uh, tuning carburetors uh, what are they rich are they lean uh, I'm having some trouble with this one. I'll show you guys later when I fire it up what it's doing. But basically, I, if you just wide open throttle right off the the bottom, it just falls on its face. So, um, you know, a lot of guys that are uh, used to tuning carbs, you know, could figure this out just by the sound and whatnot. But uh, I kind of like wanted to try and see if we can get a little bit more accurate with some things. Uh, there's a ton of YouTube videos out there and message boards and everything else, but. What I haven't seen a lot of is using a, an air fuel ratio um, gauge. Uh, a lot of guys put these in cars when they're doing their tunes and their their maps uh, that, that they can custom load into programmers and things like that. But uh, I'm going to try and use an air fuel ratio gauge to um, to do the same thing essentially. See where we're uh, rich, maybe lean. I have a feeling this thing's really rich uh, is what's going on. But uh, let me show you our setup here. So. This is a uh, 2007 Cowie uh, KX250F, and so uh, this is a customer's bike that I uh, replaced, so basically from the crank all the way up, and, and my buddy is going to be uh, giving this to his son for his birthday, but uh, obviously i got to get this jetting thing going. Um, so I actually had purchased a brand new FMF exhaust, so there's the the new muffler but I've got the old one here and there wasn't really anything wrong with it but um, what I'm using it for is on these air fuel ratio kits you've got they come with a bung and you're gonna put those in your exhaust pipe and then run your wiring back so here's all our wiring for all that it's not really uh, set up yet uh, as far as clean the way I would want to do it to have a permanent setup to do this type of thing and I still got to figure out how I would do this without having a bung installed um, but at any rate we'll go into that a little bit later but that's what we've got so I will uh, get this thing fired up so you can kind of hear what it's doing uh, I'll put the uh, O2 sensor in the bung there so we won't have a, a huge exhaust leak off the side and uh, and then hopefully we can get this thing figured out see what readings we're getting on the, the air fuel ratio gauge and um, and hopefully figure out what's going on with this thing Okay guys, so here's our setup. This is the AEM air fuel ratio. Um, in retrospect, I probably would have got the one that has the lambda numbers on the outside, um, which if you don't know what that is, uh, I can show, put a link in this video to show you how to, what, to explain what lambda is. But regardless, this is showing, so basically these analog numbers in the red LED light there showing that basically we have an abundance of air, which is rich, which is why you're getting the three lines um, on there. And then when I fire this thing up, you'll see the uh, output. So uh, based on the stoichiometric uh, equation, we want about a 14.7 to one ratio, which is 14.7 parts of air per one part of fuel. Uh, and that's your goal is what you're trying to always maintain um, so you've got a perfectly um, tuned system in terms of your fuel so there's our O2 sensor down here that's in the pipe um, we've got our way oversized battery um, that I'll probably have to figure something else out to um, get a power source from at a later time but this will work for now so I'll fire this thing up and then we will take a look at uh, where we are with our with our readings Okay guys, so at idle, we're right around 13.4, 13.3, which is a good spot to be. That's kind of where I want it. So let's see what happens when we give it a little gas.
So guys, um, sorry about that. It's kind of hard to film this and uh, I've got a little chest uh, GoPro mount on. But so basically, as you saw, my, my other issue here is, is that my air fuel screw is, um, is not tight in there. Um, so as the bike vibrates, it actually um, goes leaner. Um, so I have to readjust it, but every time I put it back to where I had it before, we're right around that 13.3 um, range, which is where I want it at idle. Um, so, but as you can see though, when I, we give it gas in the quarter to half uh, throttle range, we are around, uh, we're getting really lean. So to me, that's, it's an issue with our, with our needle clip position. Um, possibly main jet, but we'll look into that a little bit here too. But so that's kind of I'm trying to show you the process of what I'm going through and trying to get this thing tuned. So let's uh, go to the next step. I'm going to pull the carb out, see where everything's at in terms of needle clip position and uh, where I'm at on my air fuel screw because that'll kind of tell us where we're at with our pilot jet and keep going from there. All right. All right, guys, so here's where we're at. Um, I found this pretty cool um, guy's breakdown. Uh, I just typed in 2007 KX uh, 250F uh, carb set or team green settings, and it went to the first thing that popped up on Google was this guy's um, post. And it's pretty cool because he's got the stock settings, pro circuits um, set up, and then team green set up. So um, obviously, these bikes come. Uh, a little lean um, well on the main jet they're fat but typically pretty lean so they're always going to drop down uh, or go up a size in the pilot jet drop the leak jet down a little bit but I'm just basically comparing I just tore uh, this carb apart and I had rebuilt this carb when I bought the bike uh, as a flip um, so I've already rebuilt the carb uh, obviously the first things you want to do uh, is you always you got to start with the right float height if the float height's off everything's going to be off so that's uh, probably the number one point I want to drive home when you are tuning carb so anyway I've gone through uh, here's my current setup uh, when I pulled everything out to see where it is I don't I think it's just a stock needle although I'm ordering a new needle uh, the NCYS needle from Jets R Us um, and but in the meantime so I've here's my current settings I'm gonna leave the main jet at 175 uh, pilot jet both pro circuit and team green at 42 and that's what I have in there my air fuel screw was around three little less than three turns out and that gave us a really good um, setting in terms of idle and then my leak jet was a 52 and I went to a 50 so the only thing I got to do now I know the needle clip positions at a two uh, I'm going to put mine to a five even though team green and pro sticker are a four because I've got that lean bog so I'm hoping and I had the lean bog um, before with the uh, with the clip at four so I'm going to try and change it to a five and then we'll set it all back up again and see where we're at Okay, so it looks like um, it looks like the needle position we had um, we went a little too much. So we're gonna bring it back to the four um, and uh, on the fourth clip, and then we're gonna retest it. But it looks looking a lot better. Uh, we don't have the bog off the bottom. I think that was because we went with the smaller leak jet. So um, we'll put it on the fourth clip and see if we can get it back to the thirteens. just the air fuel screw that I can tweak with a little bit but not bad so let's uh, let's see where we're at when we get into the uh, needle
Okay, so still maybe just a little bit rich, um, but it's probably, we're probably gonna call that good. Uh, I'm gonna ride it, make sure everything's good with the bike, but. So I think we could probably go up one more needle position to the third clip uh, from the fourth. But um, my biggest thing was getting rid of that bog, and um, I do have a new needle coming, so I'm probably gonna tear this thing apart at that point. But I'll try and do a recap here at the end uh, the video and give you guys a couple tips and um, on some things that I do when I'm taking carbs in and out and that type of thing. So anyway, hope that helped you guys and um, we'll get the wrap up here in a minute. All right guys, so I gotta say, uh, this thing absolutely rips now. And uh, I think it was a combination of a couple things. Number one, I think our, our leak jet initially was too big. Um, so we were bypassing too much uh, fuel into the float bowl. Um, and by going with a smaller leak jet, we're actually pushing more fuel down the uh, uh, down the throat of the carb, uh, which I think that was contributing to the bog. Uh, and then also the needle position. Uh, it was at a two initially. Um, we went to a five, and I think we're back, and now we're at a four, uh, which is actually what that chart recommended if you look and remember that from back in the video. So I think those two things, um, the leak jet and the clip position were the were the big issues with the lean bog uh, off the bottom. I mean, you could basically just give it full throttle right off of idle and it would just die, fall on its face. So a couple things, um, I put the other pipe back on, uh, which is the pipe that's being sold with the bike. But this was the uh, FMF PowerCore 4. I also want to give a shout out to uh, Jared uh, Brown over at A1 Fab and Welding here in Sacramento. Uh, for welding up this bong for my O2 sensor. Um, I've got to come up with a little better system for my power supply. That's a huge battery that I have usually in my boat, but since it's the winter time, that's out. But uh, all in all, I'm impressed with this, uh, with this AEM air fuel ratio sensor. So I'll put a link to that in the uh, description. Um, the one thing I'm sure everyone's wondering is you know, not everyone's gonna have a setup like this where you've got an O2 sensor in the pipe. Um, and so I'm working on seeing, number one, what the o, what what readings we're gonna get if we just drop the O2 sensor in the pipe as far as it'll go. This one's got a spark arrestor right now, so it's not gonna go very far. And you may get some influence from the ambient air um, that could throw it off. So I kinda wanna see how accurate this thing is. Uh, and I may do another video on that, but we obviously I know that this is a cool experiment for what it was, but not everyone has a spare pipe that you can do this with. So uh, I'm gonna do a couple other things and see what I can do about using this on, on any bike moving forward, kind of a universal setup. But anyway, um, I hope that helped you guys. And um, if you got any questions or comments, put them below. Hopefully I can answer them for you. And hopefully you guys got something out of this video. So um, until the next time, we'll see you.